Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting ready to read the book Frindle by Andrew Clements. It's one of my favorite books. I love this. We are going to do something a little bit different. Yes, I'm going to read to you, but I want you to follow along as I read because at the end of each chapter, we are going to be answering questions about what we just read. So you have to pay attention. You can go back and reread as many times as you want, but I want you paying attention. So I just want you aware that you're going to be answering questions. Okay. All right. Here we go. Frendel. Chapter one, Nick. If you ask the kids and the teachers at Lincoln Elementary School to make three lists, all the really bad kids, all the really smart kids, and all the really good kids, Nick Allen would not be on any of them. Nick deserved a list all his own, and everyone knew it. Was Nick a troublemaker? Hard to say. One thing's for sure, Nick Allen had plenty of ideas, and he knew what to do with them. One time in third grade, Nick decided to turn Miss Deaver's room into a tropical island. What kid in New Hampshire isn't ready for a little summer in February? So first, he got everyone to make small palm trees out of green and brown construction paper and tape them into the corners of each desk. Miss Deaver had only been a teacher for about six months, and she was delighted. Oh, that's so cute! The next day, all the girls wore paper flowers in their hair, and all the boys wore sunglasses and beach hats. Miss Deaver clapped her hands and said, It's so colorful! The day after that, Nick turned the classroom thermostat up to about 90 degrees with a little screwdriver he had brought from home. All the kids changed into shorts and t-shirts with no shoes. And when Miss Deaver left the room for a minute, Nick spread about 10 cups of fine white sand all over the classroom floor. Miss Deaver was surprised again at just how creative her students could be. But the sand got tracked out into the hallway, where Manny, the custodian, did not think it was creative at all. And he stomped right down to the office. The principal followed the trail of sand. And when she arrived, Miss Deaver was teaching the hula to some kids near the front of the room. And a tall, thin, shirtless boy with chestnut hair was just spiking a Nerf volleyball over a net made from six t-shirts tied together. The third grade trip to the South Seas ended suddenly. But that didn't stop Nick from trying to liven things up. Lincoln Elementary needed a good jolt once in a while, and Nick was just the guy to deliver it. About a year later, Nick made the great blackbird discovery. One night, he learned on a TV show that red-winged blackbirds get this high-pitched chirp when a hawk or some other danger comes near. Because of the way sound travels, the hunter can't tell whether the high-pitched chirp is coming from. The next day, during silent reading, Nick glanced at his teacher, and he noticed that Mrs. Avery's nose was curved, kind of like the beak of a hawk. So Nick let out a high, squeaky blackbird beep. Mrs. Avery jerked her head up from her book and looked around. She couldn't tell who did it, so she just said, shh, to the whole class. A minute later, Nick did it again, louder. This time, there was a little giggling from the class, but Mrs. Avery pretended not to hear the sound, and about 15 seconds later, she slowly stood up and walked to the back of the classroom. Without taking her eyes off the book, and without moving at all, Nick put his heart and soul into the highest and most annoying chirp of all. Beep! Mrs. Avery pounced. Janet Fisk, you stop that this instant. Janet, who was sitting four rows away from Nick, promptly turned white and bright crimson. But it wasn't me, honest. There was a catch in Janet's voice, as if she might cry. Mrs. Avery knew she had made a mistake, and she apologized to Janet. But uh, someone is asking for big trouble, said Mrs. Avery, looking more like a hawk every second. Nick kept reading, and he didn't make a peep. At lunchtime, Nick talked to Janet. He felt bad that Mrs. Avery had pounced on her. Janet lives in Nick's neighborhood, and sometimes they played together. She was good at baseball, and she was better at soccer than most of the kids in the whole school, boys or girls. Nick said, hey, Janet, I'm sorry you got yelled at during reading. It was my fault. I was the one who made that sound. You did, said Janet, but how come Mrs. Avery thought it was me? 
So Nick told her about the blackbirds, and Janet thought it was pretty interesting. Then she tried making a peep or two, and Janet's chirps were even higher and squeakier than Nick's. She promised to keep everything a secret. For the rest of Nick's fourth grade year, at least once a week, Mrs. Avery heard a loud beep from somewhere in her classroom. Sometimes it was a high-pitched chirp, and sometimes it was a very high-pitched chirp. Mrs. Avery never figured out who was making that sound, and gradually she trained herself to ignore it. But she still looked like a hawk. To Nick, the whole thing was just one long and successful science experiment. And Janet Fisk enjoyed it, too.